Hello everyone, it's the anime werewolf back. I mean, sorry, this is the agent. Uh, this is the agent werewolf back with another video. And today, I'm gonna be doing a The Magic School Bus original plot creepypasta. Um, if you guys like this, if you guys like this video, let me know in the comments below. Uh, leave a like and please hit that subscribe button We have a lot of subscribers like around 18 So with that being said, let's get in with this video And let's go Does anyone remember the show The Magic School Bus? It was a children's show in the 90s where a crazy science teacher would take her students on weekly adventures into such places as into space and through the human digestive system. What most people don't know is that the show was meant to be fitted to the line of horror stories for kids before the concepts spiraled horrifically out of control and most likely terrified test audiences. Originally played by PBS, it was designed by Malisha Animation Studios in Russia, and thus the original plot episode was partially animated in Russia before being chopped into a five minute mark to be a kid series. The original episode with the Downing School children were brought into the school bus. Originally the school bus had no eyes. Then transformed into a spacecraft and brought them into space where a strange thing began to happen. As such the episode started normally. The recut includes the original PBS episode one. But the music was different. It was infinitely deceasing Shepard's tone, replacing the happy intro. The title screen were merely black, with the words Arhimori over what must be the English subtitles that says the sad bus. After some research, I found out it said I cannot breathe. I only saw the episode in the recut through a friend in Russia who had a VHS tape and it sent to me by an explicit note that said that I don't share due to legal disclosure. I am guessing that the recut did not include the bus's eyes, but I'm not sure whether a layering or horror that to the students that two of the students characters Carlos and Dorothy Ann aren't there on there either. I mean, they are there, but their eyes are missing. And not to mention it, the buzz also looked much more sinister. Because the front lights are normal, though still eye like, and, and the grill on the buzz just looks extremely sad. Like it's in a constant frown. The voice work is also different, with the scene of sorrow in the American actor voices. In the PBS edition, Arnold's cousin and Janet think that Ms. Frizzle is boring, so Arnold has the teacher to take them into space in this episode. Going into space is where things begin, is where things became very messed up. 
nothing from the original episode here it is here. Instead of Buzz transforming to a spaceship kind of like the one you would see in the film like in 2001, a space oddity. Odyssey, my bad. Odyssey. During no transition. It just became it just becomes this. The walls are all white and it seemed to be infinite corridors. Corridor the yeah, corridors with steep drops. From the outside it looks like a Soviet space rocket. But larger but larger. Arnold comments that this wasn't what he expected and he wants to go home. Janet and Carlos seem equally confused. But Janet is smiling. Miss Rizzo said that there is an override lock on the ship and no one can leave until it reaches destination. We are hurtling toward the sun, Miss Rizzo tells everyone that she can either that she can either turn off the airlock and suffocate everyone. Only jokingly before saying that she will put the manual override, but it will take six months to reach Earth. She just, she just, just uh, see, uh, she suggested that everyone go to the stasis sleep. The cancerous sword had developed on Miss Riddle's face, but no one makes any mention of it. There is a problem, however. There are only nine stasis beds and eleven people, including Miss Riddle. Miss Riddle tells them that she'll be fine staying up for six months, but one of the students will have to stay up as well. Raphael suggests they draw straws. They do so, and Arnold is determined to be the one who has to stay up. Now up to the point. The episode is baffling strange. But this is where the show descends into realms that I couldn't make up. If I tried, Miss Riddle tells Arnold that originally there were 30 students but 20 of them died. She tells Arnold that she is going to to the upper airlock where where there are several beds, and she only told the students that they are left beds because she didn't want them to face the idea that one person would be alone for six months, and the time frame returning home isn't isn't six months, but rather two years. She leaves the locks on the doors behind her from the outside. You can only tell yeah you can only tell that time was progressing because Arnold's Arnold is proceeding to grow more unkempt, nervous and dirty. The nine bed the nine beds line the walls and were portholes windows along with the control panel that is deactivated. The food that was left for him sits in one corner of the room. He tried to ration it, but there were only enough to what seemed to be like a month. He also had no means for a bathroom. He so he urinates and this effects on the floor. After two minutes, two months have passed, and Arnold is looking noticeably nervous and disheaved. He's extremely hungry, more so than he ever had been. Ralph catchphrase Ralphie's catchphrase. I think I'm going to be sick being able to play repetitively over the music track. I think it meant to reflect Arnold's mind, but then this room began to talk. You're hungry, aren't you? Arnold now realizes that the predicament 
he faces, he won't survive two years in this environment, and he tried to kill himself by smashing a porthole window. He killed his other students. You don't leave me enough food, Arnold screamed. The voice began to grow darker and more tangled and deeper. Oh, but Arnold, I did. The animation does a long, slow pan across the room with what looks like a stylization of the wide angle lens pointing out the beds. And then the voice changes. I'm your. I am your extra, extra sensory nervous system. There were no hallucinations, Arnold. I am you. The weirdest and the most convincing thing about the animation is that the original episode is that Arnold looked very similar to Mrs. Frizzle. One could think that they are related. They both had pale skin, orange hair, and represent nerds. Even their memorations, aside from Mrs. Frizzle's greatest greater achievement since sense of confidence have their similarities. The voices begin to whisper, eat them. Arnold had intended to analyze the space chart over the def defunct control panel for some time, but only now realizing that he was internally whatever uh, he intentionally trapped here. Did it make sense? The path wasn't leading to Earth, it was heading toward the malformed black hole. When it strangely appeared, it let them, which that had strangely appeared in the left of the moon. Through whatever means, the room, the room was also becoming increasingly hot. So much that Arnold had to take take all but his underwear, an unclean environment and forcing him to develop sores and he slept on his side of the mat and ridiculously taking Carlos from the bed. And he could sleep there at night and he made a horrible reala realization, realization that none of them were breathing. Mr. Frizzle had not put them into stasis. She enthusiasted them. It was only after she had made the realization that a scalpel appeared near the door. Someone had opened it while he was sleeping. And removed the body and moved the bodies around. The words Brett C. Hope is scald in English in in a wall marker. The increasingly need to eat was more apparent now than ever. He looked at Phoebe. He secretly Knowing her, this became all more apparent as he looked at the scalpel and slowly started cutting into her belly. But he was not at all hesit hesitant now. The scene is most disturbing because the angle never changes. His expression is always angry and the cartoon stalls eyebrows. For the entire 60 seconds, she's he slices her up, eats her lungs and intestines, peel off and eats her skin, then moves onto the face, slicing off eyebrows and the nose, leaving a, a shaved skeletal corpse and the camera time lapse. The animation is different here. 
and more specific, more layered, and more medical looking. Now the Catherine's sores are visible in Arnold's face as well, and the next day the scalpel moves. For the next month or so, he picks up the remains of Phoebe. The next time lapse seemed more messed up because now Arnold seemed to have begun to hit pu 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 puberty. He had nibbled on the ear and fingers of every student except Janet because it's his cousin. The scalpel appeared, the scalpel appeared again. And this time the words Emerald Scorn written, written on the wall. Arnold talked to himself frantically. What does that mean? What does that mean? He picks up the scalpel and decides who to eat next. He never liked Carlos either. <clears throat> he undresses Carlos, Carlos and begins to fly some slice into him and his student ID fell out of his pocket. It says Carlos Raymond. Emerald score and Carlos Ramon. This is an anagram. Just as Brett sees hope with an anagram for Phoebe Teresa's name. By now the episode was almost over and the screen began to flicker as Arnold starts to gasp for air. You knew Arnold began to cry. The animation got very choppy at this point. Two different shots are seen. In one, the school bus collides with the sun. In another, Arnold continues to eat the remaining students in order to base the anagram instructions. Since the time lapse, you can you can see the bodies. You can only see the bodies and the bone begin to pile up. He refused to eat Janet, his cousin, before ultimately slicing his neck and scabbled in killing himself. The cancerous sores envelop his corpse. The regrade the retrograde film begin to determinate determinate before the rest of words coronan Appears to directly appear. This deck, this this directly translates to whatever happened to Janet. Then nothing else. The ship entered the black hole, and there were no credits. Instead, we just hear Arnold profoundly screaming, and he couldn't, he can't breathe. And a burning noise began to develop in the back of their track. This goes out to this goes out for a full three minutes. I tried to figure out what happened to Janet. But the only really but the only real but the only real clue is I suppose in the animation itself. <clears throat> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, story. I know it's kind of long, and I kind of messed up on some words, but you know what? Whatever. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have, please subscribe and hit that YouTube notification bell. That way you won't miss an upload. And of course, comment below on what other videos or creepypastas you want me to look up, and of course, I will always do that for you. Anyway, this has been the Agent Werewolf signing out for now. Peace.